anyway, Nathan, <laughs> we're just babbling. What's on your mind? Okay. Well, I like the Animal House reference there. That was funny. Um, so I was, I've been thinking about this, uh, something that I learned or that I heard while uh, I was taking a humanities class. And it's the claim that the most important parable in the Bible is the uh, parable of the sower. And uh, I disagree with that. And I was curious to hear what uh, everyone on this show thinks is the most important parable. I guess maybe What's the, the mo- parable the of the sower. I mean, I don't want to make it into Bible talk live, but just briefly, what okay. is it? Well, just just briefly, uh, there's a man who sows seeds and uh, it comes to pass that some fall and are immediately devoured by birds. Uh, some are unable to take root. And uh, when the sun comes up, they're scorched and then they fall in rocky some- ground. Yes, and then some fall among thorns, and the thorns grow up and choke them choke out. Them. Uh, but some grow, fall on good ground and uh, increase up to 30, 60, and 100-fold. I'm not, not sure why that's not 90, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so so the moral of this, of this parable is that the word of, of Christ is uh, analogous to the seed in that some people uh, will immediately reject it, some will accept it, but then when things get difficult or like when they get in trouble or threatened, we'll just drop it. Um, well, let me ask you that. this. Is it explained? Because, um, I mean, I remember certainly of having heard the parable and even had these little Bible books when I was a kid. Well, uh, actually, actually, Jesus explains it right afterwards. Okay, that was my so, question. Is Does Jesus explain this? Yeah, well, this is what this is what he says at right afterwards. So. Mm. And, of course, then uh, the, the, I think the thorns, I forgot it. Oh, yeah, the thorns represent worldly desires and uh, such things, I guess, oh, um, taking up your time instead of, uh, you know, instead of pursuing the word of Christ or something. Anyways, it seems to me this, this can't really be representative of Christianity because you can apply this to anything. Um, you could say it sounds like a great act- analogy for talking about Liberty. Yeah. You know, That's what it's, I was going to say, yeah. Right. You know, it, it's an interesting point, Nathan. I mean, whether or not, I guess, I don't know if value is subjective or not. I mean, for whether or not this parable is the best of the bunch. Um, but I think it's, you can find a lot of the things that Jesus has claimed as of saying, you can find them a good hundred years ago, or at least a few decades away, being very common in the Roman Empire in the first place. Um, including the golden rule is a very popular one. Publius Cyrus actually said that way before Jesus could have ever been born. Um, so, and he was not Christian, obviously, nor was he a Jew. Uh, so a lot of these ideas, right, they could work for anything. And that's probably because they were from other sources. We are uh, sowing the seeds of liberty with this discussion with Nathan. Let's bring let's bring you back on the line. Here, I like Nathan. to spill the seed of liberty myself. I, oh, God, know I, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> Brian actually did not make that up. So one of his listeners did. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sovereign techies. Uh, anyway, actually, Nathan, there's an, there's what was that? Another verse that says that's a sin. So uh... <laughs> that's in Genesis. <laughs> right. So we were talking about the parable of the sower, where it's basically about spreading ideas. Like when you spread ideas, you have to kind of cast a wide net put them out there and some people will grab gravitate to them and maybe take them up themselves and spread them further. Uh, some people will reject them outright. Some people will kind of accept them, but then like leave when the going gets tough and so forth. So uh, why do you think, why did you say you think this is the most important um, story in the Bible, Nathan? Oh, I, actually, I was going to say it's, it's not the most important story because, oh, okay. it, it, because it's like you say, it's a very, it's a very universal message. You can apply it to a lot of things. I mean, like, mm-hmm. like uh, Brian was saying, you could apply it to the Liberty movement. Um, but in this case, he's trying to apply it to Christianity, but uh, you know, I mean, you could apply it to a lot of things. It just doesn't really seem emblematic to me of what Christianity is. So that's why I was curious uh, what Brian and, and Mark and uh, I don't know if you're that interested in this discussion, but um, <laughs> I was curi- cu- yep. curious what, what they thought was the most uh, representative parable, like the one I'll you leave think it to of the Bible think geeks. Christianity. Yeah, well, so, I mean, you had some professors say that the most important parable in the Bible was the uh, parable of the sower, and that's fine. Um, I don't know what important means um important well, means that's what, it, what i'm that's what i mean like most representative of jesus's teachings yeah um i would say that i don't know representative but i i you asked me important so i had a, i had something prepared i don't know what representative oh. jesus i have no clue um okay well I, go ahead then. i think jesus is probably a conglomeration of some very interesting teachers um you know jewish teachers that's what my guess is but he may because, I mean, certainly some of the things that happened with Jesus happened, uh, you know, 
to Osiris and a bunch of other uh, fictitious uh, people. But for me, the um, the most important is the uh, the parable of Lazarus, the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus and oh, the rich man. I was going to say this is the worst. This well, is the one that turns Christianity <laughs> into like an evil religion, in my opinion. Well, one thing about the parable parable of Lazarus and the rich man is is that they, uh, you know, like the rich man walks past Lazarus, doesn't give him alms or something like that, and then uh, or knows him, uh, I guess is what it's said, and then they go to the afterlife, and the rich man is in something akin to hell, although it's never called that, and Lazarus is in paradise, although it's never called heaven. Um, it's called Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom, I guess is what it's called. Yes. And he's got bosoms. Yeah, well, no. I mean, we all have a bosom. <laughs> Yours is just it shows how ridiculous the parable is. <laughs> um, and that, you know, he then begs the, uh, the Lazarus for a, just a drop of water on his tongue. What's interesting though, is that at no point do they ever say the sin that the rich man committed nor do they say, um, you know, they, they're, they're, not, they're completely unclear as to why he's in hell. Well, he's a rich man. It's but, easier for a person to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man. To they get into they the certainly say that. Um, easier, easier for a, ne- uh, a camel to a go, camel. Through, yeah, go through thank the you. eye of a needle. Then you're not sure what an eye of a needle is. Is it that little door in the uh, big door um, at, a, at a temple gate? We don't know. Right along the wall. Yeah. Right. We don't know what it is, but the suggestion is, is that basically being rich um, ends you up in hell but then it's really the only good reference to hell in the whole the people in hell actual individual human beings in hell in the whole new testament so it sort of legitimizes the story of hell exactly. but never even says god in his holy word never even explains why he puts this person in hell so i don't know what that what the story is supposed to mean there's all kinds of uh, you know, philosophies. I, I enjoy the preterists and what they have to say on it. Um, but, you know, you're like, does hell exist? And what's important about it is, is that it creates hell as a legitimate concept in Christianity yeah. when hell is really iffy in the Bible. Yeah, it, I would think without this parable, you wouldn't have a case for the eternal hellfire and all that business. It just wouldn't be there. Right. Hell was created for demons. That you know, that's where, or excuse me, God's angels. That somehow uh, the third of God's angels that Lucifer takes with him, but God controls Lucifer. I don't know what that story is. It, it's baffling to me. But uh, hell's was created for them, not for people, according well, to the story. Wasn't there- wasn't there a passage about uh, unbelievers will be cast into Gehenna or something? Uh, like well, there's the Lake pit. of Fire at the end. Gehenna is actually the re- Gehenna is used. That's that's actually the the uh, uh, garbage pit that existed outside of. Right. Uh, right. Jerusalem, yeah. Speaking of hell, I think we're in radio hell. So, Nathan, yeah. <laughs> thank you for the call. We're going to move on. Appreciate your thoughts tonight. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 